Some of you may not know of the brand GKD, which is understandable as they've been out of the game for some while now, but they have had a history in the retro handheld industry, albeit not the best history, but they are continuously making steps forward to create handhelds for the masses. Their most recent being this, the GKD Plus Classic, a metal vertical handheld that caught our attention many months ago when it was teased online. Now it's available on Kickstarter and on their website should any of you want to back it and support the production, which eventually ships to customers in January. But please take into consideration there are always risks backing projects on Kickstarter or anywhere online really, so please do your own personal research beforehand. The GKD Plus Classic is designed to be a more premium version of the GKD Mini launched way back in mid-2021. This time they have gone for a larger design featuring two extra analog sticks, a metal shell, a 640x480 display, a RK3566 chipset, and the same used in the RG353M might I add, and they've also got 1GB of RAM and 300 milliamps of battery. After playing with it for a few weeks, I realized they have done what Ambronic should have done and made the RG353V metal. In fact, it's nearly identical to the RG353V in every way, even down to the specs. But where the Plus Classic prevails is build quality. The metal design alongside the sleek black buttons and the fake cartridge slot on the back gives it character and charm, something many handhelds these days lack. It feels and looks like a Game Boy Color on steroids, thanks to the screen's large bezel. And for those that know me well, the Game Boy Color is my favorite handheld of all time. So this is somewhat nostalgic for me to play on. The face and front design is a little cluttered, but that's just me liking minimal buttons on the front of my devices. The screen is an absolute pleasure to play on, and although it's not a super high resolution, a 640x480 resolution on a 3.5 inch IPS display is just fine on a handheld of this caliber, and it's protected by a tempered glass screen. The logo sits on the top left and I'll admit it confuses me a little bit because they have titled the handheld the GKD Plus Classic, but the logo says GKD Mini Plus, indicating that there is a bigger and non-mini handheld, which is not the case. Perhaps they already invested in these screens beforehand and before they finalized the name of the console. Who knows, but it's just, it's just odd. As mentioned, there's just too many buttons on the face with another confusing logo in the middle, which I have no idea what it means, nor have they mentioned it in any of their marketing material. Again, just odd. In the logo is another LED indicator, which lights up red when charging. The D-pad is large and of high quality with a soft touch and little travel to it. The action buttons are also high quality and have a soft touch. There's also very little movement on the buttons which adds to the high quality nature of the device. Between them you'll find your start select and your emulator menu buttons for when you want to save or exit emulation. Then at the bottom you will find two analog sticks. These are nearly identical to the Nintendo Switch, so are not hauled joysticks, which are the norm recently, and they obtrude out of the shell slightly more than the action buttons. But overall, they're fine. Hauled joysticks would have been nice, especially when you see and realize that they are featured on other $150 retro devices on the market. So, you know, why not keep up to the trends? Around the sides, you'll find other buttons such as volume, sleep, wake, two SD card slots, a USB-C port, and a headphone jack. Oh, and for the first time, R3 and L3 buttons on the side? An odd place to locate them, but I guess they're a nice addition to those of you that like to map extra keys. I have yet to use them, in all honesty. Then finally on the back you'll see what I mean when I say it has that Game Boy Color feel because they've added a design that resembles a cartridge that says hello and a curved bottom that houses the 3000 milliamp battery pack which is easily removable might I add. Below the battery compartment you have two speaker grills. 
Yes, speaker grills, which is not exactly where you want to have them because your hands rest on them, making the sound a little distorted at times. And because the sound is directed away from you, it makes it annoying for anyone in the same room as you have to turn up the volume to actually hear it properly. This cements my reasoning for saying they've made the front just too cluttered. They should have added the speaker grill on the front and removed any unnecessary buttons from the front to the sides. As much as I love the back design, unfortunately, these are one of the worst shoulder buttons I have seen on a handheld, up there with the RG353V. Why these companies think shoulder buttons like these are a good idea is beyond me. GKD even shouts about it on their Kickstarter, saying it's an ergonomic design and they have calculated the perfect 15 degree angle for comfort. What the hell are you on about? These are horrific and my fingers can't get any grip on them because it's like a steep cliff edge doused in butter. In, 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 and the R2, L2 buttons are just so small, it reminds me of when I'm trying to like pick a tiny Lego piece out of an awkward build. It's just a real shame because every time I go to pick this up, I then think, oh, bloody hell, I got those tiny cliff edge shoulder buttons and I just put it back down. This is really the only major design flaw of the entire handheld, if you ignore the speaker placement. Everything else is just a personal preference. The metal shell adds a nice bit of weight to it, giving it that premium feel and adding extra resistance to bumps, scratches and drops should you be taking this with you when you're traveling. Overall, design-wise, they've done a great job to make it a solid, comfortable handheld that looks sleek and modern but have seriously messed up in some areas to a point that it stops me from picking it up from time to time. Now let's talk about performance. This uses the RK3566 chipset alongside one gigabytes of RAM, which is a typical medium spec for retro handhelds released in 2022. And in my opinion, it's one of the better chips for a 3.5 inch handheld. Anything larger will move you into GameCube and PSP at 2X resolution territory, which in my opinion requires a bit more of a larger screen to take full advantage of the power. When you turn on the device, you'll be greeted with Emulation Station pre-installed, ready for you to jump into games. It's not the easiest or simplest of user interfaces, but it's good enough for any newcomer to understand. GKD are promoting that they have pre-installed over 2,500 games, which certainly is illegal unless they have the licenses to do so, but I can't imagine a lot of the customers will mind. Even in ours, this was pre-installed with Chinese games instead of English, which I wasn't, you know, too bothered about, but you know. And because it uses a RK3566 chip, I was confident in what it could run. Your old classics like Game Boy, Game Gear, Atari Lynx, Wonderswan, NES, SNES, and even Nintendo 64 games ran silky smooth on here. I know in 2022 that isn't exactly impressive, but on the bright 640x480 screen they all look stunning, especially if you play on native or scaled resolutions. I then moved on to PSP emulation and this is where I saw some pushback. Most PSP games do work well, but because the GKD Plus Classic has just one gigabytes of RAM, it does struggle pushing high frame rates on large PSP games such as God of War. Which is a shame because adding another one gigabyte of RAM isn't going to add much extra cost to this device. What, maybe 20 bucks? I, I don't know. But to my surprise, I then tested Dreamcast games thinking I would encounter the same issue, but thankfully that wasn't so. All of the Dreamcast games I tested worked really well with no frame rate issues, crashes or audio stutters. The 3000 milliamp battery performs well too with a range of four to five hours on a single charge. Some of you may ask if the metal gets hot or warm when playing games for that long and I would honestly say no, not really. You will notice a slight warmth, but nothing out of the ordinary. So the GKD Classic Plus can basically emulate all of your retro consoles up to Dreamcast, but not including large power intensive PSP games which for 159 bucks isn't bad when you consider it's one of the only vertical metal handhelds on the market, a niche that has very little competition or choice for customers wanting that design. But 
It's only $159 during the crowdfunding campaign. In reality, this device is retailing for a whopping $279. That to me is too high in a time when the market is saturated and competitors are lowering their prices just to keep some skin in the game. At $279, unfortunately, this is not a good deal, especially when you consider that the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus and the RG353M outperform this in almost every way for half the price. Yes, the metal shell is nice and it's a great handheld for 159 bucks, but at 279, I cannot advise picking this up. At that price, it needs a touchscreen display, Android OS, longer battery life, better shoulder buttons, and front-facing speakers to even be considered. Welcome back, GKD. I've missed you, but you have some learning to do. As per usual, thanks for watching this video, and if you love handhelds, be sure to check out our newly launched coffee table book about the history of handhelds. I'll leave a link in the description box below. We put a lot of time and effort into it, and I personally think it's one of the best gaming books of the year. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.